like share and subscribe channel for more ghost stories also share your experiences in comments story 1 psychic abilities in my lifetime i've seen many ghosts and slash or apparitions when i was a child these things scared me half to death so much so that i was 10 years old before i could fall asleep in a dark room i've been told i come from a long line of supposed sensitives my mom labeled herself a psychic gave readings and helped various people including the police find missing people my mom was also into some really dark stuff which turned me off to the whole idea of this type of phenomena unfortunately she also a compulsive liar who suffered from bipolar disease munchausen by proxy schizoaffective disorder and paranoia which sort of makes people less inclined to believe some of her wilder statements had i not witnessed some of these events with my own eyes i'd not have believed they occurred when i was 13 i was in a bad car wreck i watched my mom die and saw what I assume was her spirit exiting her body. I didn't realize it at the time, but her airway had been cut off by the force of the steering wheel against it. I remember grabbing her and shaking her until she started breathing again. After the car wreck I was able to feel physical sensations while touching or standing next to people. Occasionally spirits would talk to me. This was all completely overwhelming. I was in my mid-twenties before I was finally able to begin come to terms with my abilities. That said I spent decades worrying that I was a psychotic nutcase. When I worked in the medical field I could feel when patients were sick or going into cardiac arrest. I had a sense of which patient would survive and which would not. Suffice it to say I told few people of my abilities. When I was in my thirties my dad suffered a massive heart attack. I'd known for weeks he was ill, and tried to help him, but he wouldn't let me. The day he had his heart attack, I managed to get him to the hospital where I worked. Before he went into cardiac arrest. I remember running into the ER and telling the charge nurse my dad was having an MI. Thankfully they took him right in and placed him directly in a cardiac bed. While sitting in the nurse's lounge talking to the head nurse I suddenly saw my dad standing in the hallway speaking with his dead parents. I looked at her and said I think my dad's in cardiac arrest. She gave me a hug and told me not to worry. He was fine five minutes ago, I'm sure he's fine now. Then I heard code blue to see one coming over the intercom, and knew what I was seeing was real. I told no one what I'd seen that day. Two days later my dad, who survived his first MI, told me he'd seen his mom and dad while in cardiac arrest. He said his dad had told him it wasn't yet his time to go. Sadly he died three months later. I woke up with an urgent need to see my dad. I ran into his bedroom and found him in cardiac arrest. I felt for a pulse and he had none, yet he was still breathing. Blood was pouring out of his mouth. His lungs sounded as if he had inhaled a gallon of fluid. I remember squeezing his hand and feeling him squeeze back. It was, and always will be, the single most amazing moment in my life. I knew he was dying. He knew he was dying, cancer. He was scheduled to have both kidneys removed in two days, along with his bladder. His diagnosis was grim. If he survived he'd be on dialysis the rest of his life. So I stopped CPR, and held on to my dad. The guilt of that moment stayed with me for almost 20 years. I was still holding his hand when told him I loved him, that it was okay for him to go, that I'd take care of mom for him. He took one last deep breath, exhaled and went limp and still. A river of blood continued flowing from his mouth. I felt the essence of him leaving the room. I never realized how deep our connection had been, or how much I would miss feeling his energy, spirit, or whatever other name you want to give it, after he died. It was as if a door had opened, and he was still there, then closed, and he was gone. Almost 30 years later I still miss my dad and his beautiful energy. I still hear and see things and have recorded sounds, voices, and images of apparitions in and around my home. I don't know if spirits seek me out because I can hear and slash or see them, or because some places are haunted. 
I've gradually come to terms that seeing and hearing things is part of who I am. Thankfully enough people have been there to verify what I've seen, that I no longer worry about my sanity. I've only begun talking about my abilities to others in the past few years. I'm 60 years old. Story 2, Ghost of a Girl. She silently sat there, head towards the wall, as if tasting the wall with her unnaturally long tongue. When I looked at her, she suddenly froze. I can still feel the chills this incident brought. I can feel the goosebumps as I write this in my hostel room all alone. Other than my brother, nobody ever knew what happened to me that day. Being a disbeliever in ghosts and supernatural, I tried many explanations that fell flat when I tried to reason this. Maybe I missed some details, maybe this was nothing unnatural. But maybes are maybes. Here is the account of what happened. Time around 8 p.m. February 28, 2019. New Delhi, India. I don't know whether it was the chill in the air or the diabolical cold which I was feeling that day. Either way, my otherwise warm jacket was not helping me much. I have seldom been to Delhi, so I decided to pay my respects to visit a religious place in New Delhi. I had to leave Delhi, the other day, my plan was to sit and find some solace. I had no idea about the kind of arrangements that are needed neither the correct route to the temple. I had my earphones plugged in, Google Maps active and was traversing whatever route was on my screen. Armed with fierce determination to reach the temple on time and with excitement that this is the same place where film scene was shot. I gone through the narrow alleys and sometimes completely desolate streets. I have encountered strange things and strange people before but over here, the humans of the area seemed as if they had been gobbled up and I was wandering in desolation. People were fast decreasing in numbers as my destination inched closer. I was not afraid, but it was eerie. Back in my mind, I knew, I have taken a path less traveled by. It was badly illuminated. But bad illumination is always preferred over no illumination. Out of sheer desperation and with raging doubts on the validity of the location being shown on Google Maps, I uttered very softly. Are you sure this is the way? A reply came flying to me in all this wilderness. I am seriously interested in helping you out and having a chat. Excuse me if something doesn't sound right. I was petrified for a moment, but it was just my Google Assistant, being too prompt in helping me out. Before I could utter a sigh of relief, my eyes peered into the muffled darkness and I could certainly see someone sitting there facing the walls. My destination was further, and I had to pass by that person. I was very quiet, avoided taking any glances and tried to focus on my Spotify instead. I paused the music to make sure I am aware of my surroundings. Silence could be deafening, and I knew this for sure that day. As I moved past the person, my curious eyes snatched a quick glance. Now, I am the kind of a guy who curses the protagonist of horror movies when they open the door to investigate. I am being in a similar situation, could not contain myself. When I saw, what I saw, I was shitting bricks for weeks after that. The person was a woman, sitting too close to a wall, licking the wall with her tongue. And it was long at least longer than the longest tongue I have ever seen. What is weirder is that she froze as soon as I turned my gaze towards her. The question that burnt me the most at that moment was how the hell she knew that I was looking at her. I closed my eyes, could feel my saliva thickening and beads of sweat surfaced. But kept moving. It was as if I could feel her breath against my neck until Google Assistant told me, it's time to turn right. Wait. Right? There was no right. It was a narrow alley, clogged with logs of wood, vehicles, it was untrespassable. The main street ended there. This meant just one thing, I had to turn back. Pass that weirdness again. My legs turned to jelly as I inched forward, but when I reached that spot again. Where was she? It was impossible for anyone to escape that alley without being seen. I was on one end another end was visible against the backdrop of the night sky of Delhi. I would have dismissed her as a maniac, 
had she been there. But she wasn't there, and my heart caved in. Fear chases you faster when you run. But what choice could I have, when in all that cold, I felt the warmth of someone's breath against my neck. Again. As if she was hovering behind me. I ran, and I ran and I ran. My Google Assistant was haywire, detering and rerouting my way. I stopped when I reached a place where I saw some normal, real humans for sure. I don't go out finding ghosts or strange people, but these things have a knack of finding me. When a poet says, two roads diverged in a wood, and I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. Frost may be right, but make sure you check what time it is. If it's already dark, for God's sake don't take the one less traveled by. Hope you have enjoyed the ghost stories, please like share and subscribe for more ghost stories. Thanks for watching.